Hello there, chumsers. I, Captain Stephen Exo, and we're up in my little man cave on my freighter. So that means we're going to be doing a um, review. So yeah, let's uh, go and load up the game into the uh, holographic cube gadget. So there we go. We just put it in there. So um, we're going to be reviewing Everspace on the PS4. So there we go. It's also available on other consoles and whatnot. The only reason I'm doing a review on this, chums, is because it was on sale. It was down from being full price to being under five pounds. I got it for about three pounds and eighty pence, and with that, I also got a PlayStation theme, and the theme is really, really gnarly. The theme itself is really cool. So here we go. Let's uh, load up the game and let's have a quick look, look at what I feel about it. Here we go. Execute Mondo Exo. Kabow. Okay, so here we are with Everspace by Rockfish Games, and this is on PS4. Now, it is available on other consoles, and what I would say is the soundtrack, where right from the off, is quite good, quite immersive, sounds okay. And the title screen, you don't get a whole heap of different options, but it, it's alright as far as title screens go. I like the electronic nebula and things, pretty cool, pretty nice. And uh, when you do start, there is a tutorial mode that, uh, as you walk through it, it actually helps you into the game. It guides you in quite nicely. I would say that they could improve on some of the bits where it says about upgrading, exchanging and repairing of stuff. Now, you can do all that on the fly. So mid-battle, you can start doing repairs and things, which sort of breaks the immersion for me slightly, chums. Now, this game itself is you basically jump to an area of space, shoot some bad guys or loot some stuff, you pick up said stuff or resources and you can craft new elements for your ship to upgrade it and make it a bit more swankier and or you get units that you can slowly grind to buy a new ship because they are expensive for what they are and yet you just sort of fly around shooting things whether that's rocks or meteorites or picking up salvage tech and uh, yeah that, that's pretty much the basic premise of the game and yeah, you head towards a gate, and you jump from gate to gate. It's very much like Galaxy on Fire on the mobile phone. I'd say that the graphics on this are vastly better. I mean, in a mobile phone versus console, of course they're going to be better on console. But yeah, the actual basic premise, and the fact that you've got, what, a couple of weapons that you've got locked in, um, is very much similar to Galaxy on Fire, and the whole jumping through gates to get to places. I mean, there's a little bit more immersion. It's like right now, you can see that I'm approaching a giant vessel. And the nice thing is, you do get a little bit of monologue from the droid, or the AI, the ship computer, that guides you through and tells you a little bit more about the things. I mean, look at the graphics. The graphics are fantastic. It's really nice. But you, you don't have to land. You don't have to dock. You never get to see your player. So the immersion is sort of half broken. It's, it's, you do see your hands on the ship controllers every now and again and some of this is really really beautiful um, but it is pretty pretty kind of repetitive I would say and it doesn't feel like you're actually a person it just feels like you're flying around in a ship the whole strafing things okay but you can't pull off barrel rolls there's no your left and your right and that sort of stuff so the console it feels very arcadey in control methodologies it doesn't really feel as good as a flight simulator and it doesn't feel as action-packed as an arcade shooter. So it's somewhere in between the two, and I really couldn't make up my mind whether I actually liked this game or not during my first impressions. So I gave it a bit longer offline. I mean, I was streaming my first impressions live. I put a card up at the top right now to that, so if you do want to see my first impressions, you can. And I may even put a link at the end of this video as an end card if you want to watch my first impressions. But yeah, it, it just... It just feels a little bit empty, this game. So here I am, flying towards a gate. And all you have to do is fly into the gate and sort of hold still for a while for it to connect. And then you'd be taken to a new sector of space. And I'm finding pretty much every sector of space has some different visual um, differences. I mean, I, I didn't fly, I didn't actually stop long enough there. So I have to now turn around, fly the way back in again, and hold still for a little bit longer. Don't fly as fast and wait for that to fully connect. It'd be nice if it just jumped you, you know, rather than having to wait there. That I found was a bit weird. And then it takes into autopilot and whisks you off to the next part of the galaxy. So here I am, arrive in a new sector, come in, and it's pretty much the same thing. You fly to another gate, and it's not a proper gate, it's just like a little warp area. And that's it, you just walk from sector to sector, gate to gate, and that takes you into new sectors of space. You might get some new visual... Um, items it's like there's one part where i come across a lovely great big ringed planet and things like that but yeah it's, it's very samey it's very very samey now i played this for a good two hours i would say 
And yeah, I I done some of the story. It was quite nice. So some of the story is okay. I mean, it turns out that you're a clone called Adam, and you've got a bit of rivalry with some guy called Lightning Seth, and you have to sort of encounter him as almost like a little mini boss fight as one of your first fights, which I think I've slipped into this review. But the galaxy map is pretty much this. You just sort of choose different directions that you want to go. The branches off in a different sort of tangent. You choose where you want to go. It doesn't really give you too much of a heads up of what you're going to expect in that area. Or which path is the most lucrative or the most dangerous. Or what the pros and cons are of choosing one over the other. If you do see giant skulls above ships, that's to denote that they are a little bit higher than you in class and um, weaponry. And taking them out, you might get a better bonus. But to be honest, they come after you anyway, so it's not like you've got a freaking choice. You see these big skulls, you can't run away, they can't outrun them, they will catch up with you. So it's a case of having to do battle with them, whether you, you feel that you're prepped for it or not. But you can call up the menu, which pauses space and time, which is... It kind of breaks immersion for me, that little bit chumps. It'd be nice if there was proper docking ships that you can dock with, because the only time you really get to spend on perks, or at least the only way I found out about putting perks on your ship, is if you freaking die, and then you can do perks. This is the repair menu that I'm on about. There's no perks on there. The perks is on uh, inside your um, your fleet ship, which you never really get to see anyway. But um, yeah, so you can repair stuff here on the fly. So if you do get damaged, it's okay. Just pause the game. Go into here, put, fix some stuff, and go back into the battle. Bit weird, I know. Very odd. But yeah, that that's the way it's designed. I mean, it's not multiplayer, so it's not going to break anything, I suppose, immersion-wise. But it does, kind of. You know, if you had a droid that was actually doing the repairs for you, and you're interacting with that, then perhaps that's a thing. But I don't know. It just didn't feel right to me. In fact, everything in this game just didn't feel right to me. Uh, the actual the actual story and the character, you, you didn't really want to find out who Adam really was and why he's fallen out with Seth. Even though the cutscenes are fairly good and quite nicely added and quite well drawn, it's a story that's been done to death for me, really. So, yeah, it's a case of then just flying over to a gate, activating the gate, jump into a new sector, and yet each sector has got its niceties, like I say. I mean, look at that nebula. That nebula is beautiful. There were some elements in this game where I was like, wow, this is visually stunning. And then other parts I was like, okay, well this looks exactly like the last place I was at. I know there's only so much you can do with space, really, I suppose. But there we are. I'm just engaging into another battle here. And I find that the ship I AIs on the bad guys, they fly past you, circle round for another sortie, and by that time you can unleash hell on them and destroy them. So you may have to take a few hits from them to start off with. And then it's a case of, of just simply turning around and blasting the shite out. And that's kind of about as engrossing as the space battles get. The only thing is, is later on in the game, they're going to have better shields and better weapons, but they just fly in exactly the same sort of flight patterns and um, squadrons, so it doesn't really prove a massive challenge. However, if you're not upgrading your ship by collecting enough resources and you're not on top of your upgrades, you're going to die. And um, yeah, you're going to die often, so make sure that you're going around, grinding asteroids, picking up everything and anything, applying your perks, applying your upgrades, and you'll be fine. But to be honest, it just feels a bit too grindy, and it's all grindy in space. There's no grinding off spaceship, there's no docking really, as per ship docking per se. You just fly in and touch an icon. It, it just... It's not a fully-fledged game, and I'm so happy I didn't pay full price for it. I paid about £5 for it, about £3.80 to be exact. But yeah, I, I am got a, a free theme with it. The theme is fantastic. I've left it applied on my PlayStation. It looks fantastic. It sounds fantastic. The theme itself is worth a couple of quid. And the fact that I got the game on top, even better. And this is one of the cutscenes. One of the cutscenes here, as you can see, that they look like they've all been drawn. I don't know whether that's some sort of um, a filter or something on, on, on some sort of computer graphics, but it looks really nice. There's been some real effort put into this, and it does work quite nicely. The cutscenes and the action and the game is quite nice and fluid. It's a bit of fun. Um, for what I paid for it, I feel that I got my money's worth. I mean, I can't really overly complain, but at the same time, I'm reviewing this as if it was a full-priced game. So, yeah. It's not worth a buy. If you want to see whether it's worth a buy, you go to worth a buy's channel. But yeah, no, for me, I would say it's an okay game, but it's it's definitely not a fully fledged functioning game. I'd be gutted if I paid full price for this. But yeah, I'm rating it as if I did. I'm uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you my rating in a bit, Jumps, once I've come out of here. But as you can see, this Sector 3, as I arrive, I arrive in like this uh, thunderstorm in space, which is quite lovely. And the visuals, the visuals are very, very nice and stunning. And yeah, 
looks great, doesn't it? But yeah, that's, that's pretty much my sort of playing through of um, uh, Everspace. And it, it's okay. It's okay. It's not too bad. Okay, chums, so my thoughts on the game itself is it feels a bit like Galaxy on Fire, which you can get on mobile. You jump through different gates, you take on different bad guys, you collect stuff, you upgrade, you get new ships. The story is very sort of bland and linear. You're a guy that wakes up with no memory of who he is, turns out to be a clone, fights his old mates, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's, it's done to death. Um, but yeah, it was okay. It was kind of enjoyable as an arcade sci-fi shooter. And I'd say it's worth about a 7 out of 10. Was it worth the money I paid for it? Probably. But I'm probably not going to play it again after playing it for a good hour or so. That's it. That's my feel. It's not one of those games I'm going to be picking up and wanting to complete and go back to and, and ace it on every level. It's just meh. It's just bland. It, it, if it was VR, then yeah, I probably would play it a lot more. But it's not. So there you go. That's what I, I've given it. Exo, do you care to review this, my little chum? Everspace has very nice graphics, a decent soundtrack and good sound effects. Other than that though, the gameplay is rather limited and the storyline also. It feels like a mobile phone game that's been ported to console and I score this 7.2. Right, so there we have it. Exo's review is pretty much on par with my own. And yeah, he, he did like the droidy type voice and the actual voice acting and stuff like that, which all seemed to be on point, and so did the cutscenes. So yeah, it's not bad, but it's not brilliant. It's just, yeah, it's just middle of the range. It's, well, it's not even mid, it's, it's above middle of the range. Middle of the range would be 50%. I gave it a 70. So yeah, it's, it's all right. I mean, if you want something to pass a bit of time, you want something a little bit fun, something you don't have to think about, it's the perfect sort of game. But other than that, it's got no real depth. It didn't have no longevity. The ships... Yeah, there was only a, a cho 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 choice of a few. So, yeah, it, it just really didn't um, stay on my palette for long chums. Okay, so that's my review. Take care. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Oh, and if you've got anything you wish to add, add it to the comments, please. That'd be fantastic. Um, yeah, tell, tell us what you thought of the game. Whether you thought I was a little bit harsh on it. I think maybe I was. Maybe I didn't give it long enough. But to be honest, you don't get out of your ship. You don't walk around. It wasn't all that immersive. And um, it maybe it would have been a bit more immersive in VR, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have to say. Okay, cheery bye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And yes, I have a Patreon if you wish to support my channel in that way. There is a tier there for pretty much everyone, including ship models. And here are the Patreons that are supporting me in that way, thanking you. And here are my other supporters. And again, thanking you, Patreons. I also have merch. You can grab yourself a mug, a t-shirt, some fancy socks, or a lovely hoodie, heading over to Teespring. Or yeah, you can hit like, subscribe, or just don't skip my adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Thank you very much for watching, and please consider clicking one of these links.